Good morning, and welcome to the Buna Fight Experience podcast. I am your host, Kyle, but really, people just call me Buna. This is a business podcast with a hyper focus on esports and the creator economy. If you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Doing so supports the channel and gets this content in front of people who need to see it. If you have a favorite part of the episode or have suggestions for future episodes, please let me know in the comment section below. I have some exciting new enhancements slated to be released in the beginning of May, so be sure you're following me on Twitter, which is at Bonafide Gaming, for the most recent updates. Thank you so much for being here, and let's go ahead and get started with the show. Good evening, Stanley. How are you, man? I'm doing good, bro. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. It's a it's a it's a nice it's a it's a cloudy day here. Uh, we're here in Austin, Texas. You know, um, I know I know you're a little bit farther away. You know, um, yeah. So it's it's not too bad. You know, I've had some coffee, I had some tacos. You know, um, very nice. I can't I can't remember if it was you that likes or doesn't like avocado, but it had a lot of avocado in it. Yeah, I'm not a big fan personally. <laughs> uh, I don't really even I don't really eat uh, tacos all too often, but like, uh, yeah, not the biggest fan of avocado. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you you know Irish, right? Like you know Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the same way, man. I don't, I don't get it. You know, I don't, I don't. It's, it's okay. You haven't, you haven't had one in Texas, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you a pass. Yeah, I might change my mind. Who knows? <laughs> well, man, well, well, man, welcome onto the podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, and for you know, you're like in the streamer community. I can't find who one who anyone who doesn't know your name. But for my audience and for the new people listening in, who are you, man? What do you do? Yeah, so um, as I like to say on stream, I'm Stallion. I am from the East Midlands in the UK. We've actually had a really nice day outside today for the first time in uh, in, a, in a long time. It's been beautiful. So I was out there this morning, uh, you know, just getting on the daily walks and runs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the moment, you know, due to change, uh, I am currently a Call of Duty content creator, but I would class myself as a community content creator. We put the heart, you know, the community at the heart of everything that we do. We're all about good, positive atmosphere. And just trying to bring a, a positive mental impact on all the content that we create. That is the heart of everything that we do. And yeah, what about bringing like that kind of like family vibe? We have a very kind of special feeling when people come into our stream. So something I'm really proud to uh, spearhead and, and continue on day by day. Yeah, man. I mean, I can I, I can speak with that because I, I first I first found, you know, before all of this, you know, before before I, we'll get into all of your you know, achievements here in a minute, you know, and, and yeah. some of the journeys to that. But like when I met you, it was it was, uh, you know, I think it was like, yeah, like 20 or 30, maybe 40 viewers uh, playing marbles on Christmas Day, man. You know, yeah. um, and I interacted yeah. you, with you for 10 minutes and I'm like this. There's something about this, dude. Like, I just want to keep coming back. Like, you know, the, the everyone, not only you, but like the chat. Hey man, welcome yeah. in. Or hey, see you later. I had like five people welcome me in and and also, you know, say see you later whenever I left. You know? Yeah. Um so you know, so you are man like let's let's just let's just hop right into it man. You know, how long have you been you know, your your streamer, your content creator? Like how long have you been doing this for, man? So I started on February the 4th, 2018. So it's been mm-hmm. Nearly three years and two months now. Uh, I got into it through a friend of mine who I actually met on uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 over 10 years ago now. Um, we you know, we became friends over the game. We stayed really close friends ever since. And he actually convinced me to get into streaming uh, because gaming and, you know, uh, just like viewing streams and stuff is something we've always done for, let's say, over the last 10 years since the days of like Justin TV and such. And um, yeah, he convinced me to do it. I, I started it up. Uh, twitch.tv forward slash I can't even remember what my first name was it had some sort of variation of stallion in there <laughs> but it's it's now just stallion which is nice and um yeah I've, ever since I started I got addicted and you know three and a bit years later here we are still going so yeah man I mean so it, it, I mean you mentioned three and a half years I mean there's there's yeah. people you know like I look at like Tim the Tap Man I look at yeah you know, it took like seven you know ten years for them to get to where they're at so I mean you know yeah. what what is it about you know I, I I, I guess I'm trying to find the question. Like, what is it about? Like, what is it about content creation that allowed you to like grow so fast, man? Well, I mean, gaming is something I've done my whole life. Um, mm-hmm. It's not something I really just got into because of the the, the trend behind it. Because obviously, mm-hmm. you know, live streaming over the last ten years has been very much you know front force, and now these days, especially, it's all about it being an influencer and a creator, and you know, gaining an audience. And you know, these young kids who grow up now see all these famous people, and they're like, I want to do that. And it's, you know, now more than ever, it's more trendy than anything to get into this industry and get involved. But, you know, when I when I started off, I've been gaming since the age of like four years old. I'm 29 now. So it's always been something I've wanted to do uh, or enjoyed doing. And then 
I never really had the PC or the setup for it when I first started. So I just thought there's no point in me doing it because I don't have the right stuff for it. And then my friend just said, look, just try it out, you know, give it a go and just see how you get on with it. And then, you know, piece by piece, uh, we started building it up, you know, for, for, for somebody who's been doing this for three years. I've changed direction a few times yeah, yeah. in terms of my content and what I'm doing, you know, naturally as creators do. And um, I think the reason that we've managed to get to where we are now is because we always stuck to the core of what we were about. And, you know, no matter where we go or what content we create, the ethos of creating a positive atmosphere and just somewhere where people feel like they can be at home is uh, more powerful than absolutely anything. You know, we may not be there in the hundreds of thousands or even millions of viewers, but if you come in there and just, you know, feel the energy of what's going on and the people that are there, you can see what we have is extremely tight knit and it can feel like there are all the support of hundreds of thousands of people in there. And then one day, which, you know, it will happen, get to that. It'll be such a strong movement that wherever we go, we bring that that kind of vibe with us. So um, yeah, the three and a bit years, I'm very proud to, to say where I've got to so far. It's been a lot of hard work it's been times where I've sat there and I've just thought, you know what, this isn't working out. Not like my whole career, but like different mm-hmm. segments of what I've done. And I've sat, I wanted to tear my hair out. I just think people just ain't interested or people aren't watching. I understand what's going on here. Honestly, it's the most up and down emotional roller coaster ever these last three years, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. Cause end of the day, I, I now work for myself and I know that all the effort that I put in is in it's, it's for me and those around me, you know, who've helped me get this far. So I think it's fantastic, man. You know, like I want to, when it, when it comes to, when it comes to like, you, you mentioned shifting, you know, shifting, different, shifting different con- uh, directions with your content. You know, like you mentioned like changing directions, you know, the first time mm-hmm. you did that, you know, what was that experience? Like when you, when you had built this community, you're like, okay, I'm going to try something different. Like what, talk, talk to me a little bit about that process and like, what, what was that like? I mean, it's extremely scary. I mean, it, and, and, it, and it gets even more scary every day. I mean, when you first start, you know, if you're only a, a very new creator, you can be pretty experimental in what you're doing because, you know, regardless if you've got just a couple of viewers or you're just starting off, you can, you can dab into different things and try different things out and be like, oh, this isn't for me. Let's try this, just try this. You know, but when you've been doing it for three years and you've built up an audience, for example, in the situation that I'm in uh, right now um, and you change it, it can be very scary. When I first changed... I think the first major change that I went from was variety to one game streaming. And that came just over about a year in. And that was really scary because, you know, I people came in for yeah. both myself and the game as well. But now it was like, well, we're not going to do any more variety now. Now I'm just going to be depending on one game and one franchise and give this a go and see how it goes with this. And, you know, that's that's treated me very well the last two years. And you know, Call of Duty, people say what they want about it. It's it's pretty much made a life for me over this last year or so um, yeah. and allowed me to get to where I am right now. And I can now use the platform that I have to move into other directions that I've always wanted to do. And um, that's because of the life choice that I made a year and a half ago. And I'm, yeah, I have no regrets. So, Yeah, I mean, because I'll, I'll tell you, uh, you know, F- FPS, FPS streaming is is mm. one of the hardest things to do, you know, because when, yeah. when I when I create a content, you know, it's, it's a delicate balance of focusing on, because you want to provide a high level, you know, of gameplay to your, to your viewers, but you also can't ignore your chat at the same time. Yeah. You know I mean, especially with a, with a content, like content creator such as yourself, like you built this on community. It's like, that is yeah. one of the brand values that you have. So, you know, when it comes, I got to ask, like, do you, fa- do you favor more of the one game or do you, did you like, were there aspects of the variety that you liked more than the one game? And do you miss any of that? Yeah. Actually, um, now it's been a, a solid year and a half of doing it. And again, it's funny that we're doing this this podcast today because literally 27 minutes ago, I literally just tweeted the uh, direction of where, am I, where I want my content to go. And actually, I'll come up with, I've, I've got a very good analogy. And this is something that I, I thought of the last couple of weeks. And this is, I, I'm trying to make creators see it from a different point of view. Right now, when you're a gaming content creator, we, we create content reactively mostly, right? We depend on the studio or the franchise to drop updates, to drop you know, new things into a game for us to be able to provide content for our viewers and our community to say, Hey guys, here's the new gun update, or this is what's happening in the game right now. This is what's going on. This is what's going on. But the scary part about all of that is if the franchise either get, you know, lackluster with it or the updates they provide just not interesting or people just don't interest in the game anymore. Your whole, your whole career is at stake right there. And you know, in modern warfare, it was great because there's this giant hype of the first call of duty being cross platform uh, everybody yeah, could play yeah, with everybody. Yeah. It was great. This beautiful new engine. It was a great time to be a Call of Duty content creator. And over the last half a year or so with Cold War, which, you know, I personally kind of enjoy still playing it, 
But in terms of like being a multiplayer content creator, it's rough now. And even as a Warzone content creator, unless you're one of the guys at the very top, mm. getting out of that yeah. bracket yeah. in the middle and the bottom is extremely, extremely tough. If you're not winning tournaments left, right and center, it's very hard to get your name out there. And... You know, you know, we can all be honest here that Call of Duty haven't made the smartest choices over the last half year or not. The game's riddled with cheaters. I was just going to say that. Yeah, it's just not as interesting as it was this time last year. And, you know, I sat there and I thought to myself, I'm literally basing my whole career in life off a franchise and dependent on the, these publishers that don't even care about us on the most part for me to, you know, d d develop all my content. I was just like... I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be a reactive content creator anymore. I mean, in some aspects, yeah, it'd be nice to, but that shouldn't be the forefront right, of my right, content. Right. Thinking more of like a, a businessman and, and whatnot, I want to start creating uh, proactive content. I want to be able to have that following and that base behind me because I'm a content machine and I can just keep pushing out this top quality content on whatever I choose to do. And that's the content that, you know, the direction I'm going down now. But it wasn't until I tried variety and then moved into one game where I've now come into this middle spiral of, Maybe I don't even need to do just gaming anymore. Maybe I can go into all the interests that I've always wanted to right. do and use this already gained exposure that I've got and to where I am in the community to take myself to new heights, not depend on anybody anymore and just and just run with a brand new content plan. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. So yeah, Pro that's, reactive that's, versus yeah, proactive. I mean, it's definitely a very different way of looking at it, but it's, um, it's something that content creators should definitely think about. Yeah, I mean, and I I went through that myself. You know, I, yeah. I I I I coined myself as a Halo streamer. You know, then I was mm -hmm. a Gears of War. You know, and then mm -hmm. call, but I, I I'm I'm really glad that you said that because I didn't. You know, I understood that, but the way you put that into context really helped. And it's you know, I think yeah. that's really important. So I'm just gonna like recap that or like package it up for the viewers and like a nice bow is like you know yeah. when when you're like if you are actually serious about doing you know going into business for yourself and you are dependent on another brand, another company, especially even if they're making good decisions, you know, the, yeah. you know, the funny thing about brands is that they're filled with people and sometimes people make really bad decisions, you know, yeah. um, and no one's perfect. So it, it, it's extremely important to, you know, it's very similar to what I'm doing is that I've taken, I'm like, let me do this for me. Like, let me be the, the person, let me be the machine, let me be doing this. And if I want to incorporate that, it's all secondary. It's all, Precisely. it's all secondary. I think because that I can't imagine, cause I'm not full time, you know, in, in doing what I'm doing, but I can imagine someone being full time. That is a very scary feeling, you know. Very. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. I haven't played Warzone in two months. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't play it. You know, it's, it's unenjoyable. It, the, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's terrible. And in, in Cold War, I enjoy. I like I playing zombies and you know do all that. You know, that shit's fun. But, um, I, I would agree with you. you. Know now you mentioned I really like the that you uh use the term businessman. Like think of this more like a business. You know. Yeah. When it comes to all the stuff that you're doing behind the scenes, I without saying a whole lot, I know you can't. I know there's some some things you can't say, but yeah. what it, what does that mean? You know, what do you fill your day with? Like, what are what are these things that you're that you're trying to create, or what is it that you're building here? I mean, I'm a workaholic, bro. I just I, there are some times where I actually annoy myself because I just don't stop. Like my my, I'll give you my typical day to day, for example. So yeah, I'll yeah. you know I'll, I'll wake up. Uh, then go for a walk slash uh, run for about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, within that time, I'm usually replying to comments on my phone when I'm walking, whether that's TikTok. Usually TikTok is the one that fills most of my day because I'm yeah. a very active audience now. I'm talking to a lot of people. So there, um, then, you know, obviously get into Twitter and then Discord is really important for me because that's where the, you know, the streaming community and the Stallion mm -hmm. fam is. So I want to make sure I speak to them. And then out of that time, I usually get around 15 to 30 minutes to go for a run. So I then do that towards the end of it. And then I'll get back, shower, um, have some food and then it's just content. Then it's just focusing on, right, what can I get done out of my day before I go live? I then will stream from let's say 2 p.m. until 9 p.m. And after that, between 9 and 11 is gathering clips and content so I can send to my editors to get posted out. And then after 11 o'clock, I go into bed, put YouTube on, and I get my tablet out with my keyboard and plan the future on my keyboard right there. So it, we literally, yeah, it just doesn't stop. But um, I mean, if you want to, if you want to be successful, it depends. Sorry, go on, go on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want to interrupt you real quick. Um, mm -hmm. You didn't always have an editor. You know, no. you didn't always have an editor, I imagine. So when no. you didn't have an editor, what did it look like? <sighs> Awful. I mean, well, when I when I first ever started, it was just <laughs> it it was just raw clips going out and, and that was it. Um I mean, 
yeah. what, what what can you do as a creator? End of the day, you're trying to save your money and you know get various upgrades and other different bits and pieces and whatnot. And you can't afford the top level editing. And, and even now, like even though I am full time and you know I do earn well from Twitch and whatnot, but I'm trying to save. I'm in the same position as you. I'm trying to save for a house. Um, I'm trying to put money away so I can make the house look good. I have a lot of content plans that I want to do with that house. I can't just let's say throw away money for the hell of it. I always budget. It's a full business. This is something that people really do not understand when they first get in the stream and they just think, oh, just play games for fun and I can earn enough money to go full time. No, it is a full business. You have to be business minded. You have to be, you are, I am literally self-employed. I am just the equivalent of, uh, equivalent of somebody who owns a shop or somebody who has their own business. There is no difference on that. And the decisions I make, even though, you know, it's let's say in, in this position, I'm more of an influencer and a creator at the same time. It's very scary because one one bad decision and it could drive my whole career down the pothole. So you have to be you have to be very business minded on what you're doing. And you know, I'm glad that I went to university for all this. I learned a lot of important things at university and whatnot. And yeah, it's 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 no joke. If you really take this seriously and you want to be full time and you want to put you know get something really rewarding out of, you've got to put a lot of time in to get here. But yeah, I mean, especially in the in I I I try to. I try to focus as much as I can on like, I, I enjoy esports, And so like, but, yeah. you know, and what I see in esports and the content scene and they go hand in hand. It's just like, if you were not like trying to be at the best of your game and if you were not doing something that's the next level and if you were not doing these things, someone else is. This yeah. is an incredibly competitive space because guess what guys? Yeah. We get to play video games for a living. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Er yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was yeah, I was just gonna say at, at the forefront, that's what most people think it looks like, but what they don't yeah. see is the is the the absolute whole of content that goes on in the background, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you <laughs> got, like, because because if you're not producing, someone else is, and you know, then you're not going to be in the algorithm, then you're not going to be in all these, you know, people. But I think I think there is I think there is, and correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you've you've done this for long enough. You've built a strong enough community to where if you decided that you were going to take a break for like a couple days, you know, like you wouldn't lose anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and if you did, like they, they weren't going to be there anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And that's the best. I think that's the best of uh, the best feeling ever. And that's where I really uh, thrive. I think in being a, a community creator is that regardless of, you know, average view account, regardless of what's going on with the game, I'll always have that core group there. And honestly, mm -hmm. for security of myself and for being in a career that I really enjoy and what I do, there's no better feeling than that. You know, if my whole career was based on me being a pro player, or somebody who was really good at a game, but wasn't really so much of a, a personality or didn't have really a community that was there for me, but more for the game. What happens if the game dies? Or what happens if I no longer have interest right. in that game anymore? That community isn't going to care about me anymore. They're going elsewhere. Um, but it, yeah. it's different when you have that, di that, you know, that individual connection with every single person, which is the reason that I got into this and the whole, you know, the whole thing in the first place. And yeah, even though, even though this way, the way that I do it is probably a hell of a lot more work having to talk to every single individual person, making way more time to communicate with your audience in the long term it is way, way, way more, um, in my opinion, firstly, enjoyable. And secondly, brings out much more of a positive impact in what you're trying to create. Yeah. I mean, and that's what, and that's what people remember you by, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And that's, that's like that. And, and it doesn't have to be for a long time. It can be for a 10 minute period, you know? Um, yeah. and, and that makes all the difference. Question though, you know, you mentioned like, you know, if you were going to be a professional player, did the thought of a professional Call of Duty player ever cross your mind? Like, did you ever like kind of toy with that idea of wanting to to pursue that? Yeah, funny story about that, actually. So I've been playing COD for about 14 years now. Uh, <laughs> I started, I started on COD 4, Modern Warfare, which is my original one. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare came out in 2007. And back then I was uh, doing my, I don't know what you guys call it over there. It's A level. So it's, it's like you do you do high school and then it's like advanced high school. So it's like the equivalent of college kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, it's like just to go to university. Yeah, advanced placement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I wanted to get into professional playing in, I think it was around the Halo 3 Modern Warfare 2 time. Um, I used to scrim in both games. Yeah, uh, we, you know, we, we we did really, really well. It was I had a I had a good team, solid team. There's GBs, you know, you know the vibes, all the competitive stuff. But I had yeah. to give that all up to go to university. It was a decision for me. Do I do I attempt to chase something that I have no idea if it's going to work or do I solidify, solidify myself for something and then come back around the other way and say, right, well, I'm back now and now I've got something behind me here. So, you know, my family are very mm -hmm. academic and they were like, you know, even though I'm not necessarily the most academic, I went to uni to go and make sure that I had that piece of paper that wherever I go, I'm like, guess what? I have this. I, I have a right. plan B right here. And I went to uni and after that, I got a 2-1 bachelor's degree in events management, uh, which is the equivalent of you know, a B, a B grade. 
And I went and worked out in, you know, hospitality and events and whatnot for around five years, a bit of sales experience as well. And then I started streaming. And the mm. best part about it is, is, you know, if anything did ever go wrong or if something was to happen, which, you know, fingers crossed that never happens, I can walk straight back into a job with my experience and my degree behind me now. Whereas if I yeah. went down the path, number one, dropped out of school, that didn't work out, then what? So to anybody who is potentially watching this, please make sure you have a plan B before you ex execute plan A. If there's no plan B, what do you do if plan A fails? So, and it's and, and honestly, right now I'm 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 seeing this. It's a and it's been like this for a long time. It's a it's a yeah. it's a tough market right now. You know, especially yeah. if you if you don't have a degree, if you don't have anything like to to support you, if you don't have anything that yeah. you know, because you may be the hardest worker, but unless you have a connection at that at mm -hmm. that business, you know, say you were to have to go down that path, no one's gonna know that. You know, yeah. Um, and so that's 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 the challenging part. You know, I wanna I wanna talk about I wanna talk about the business for a little bit. You know, when it comes to yeah. you've been you've been partnered by a couple companies now. Um, you've been doing a couple of deals. I want to get into, I wanted to get into, I wanted to get into some of that, you know, in, you know, when it comes to partnerships, you know, what is it that number one, they're looking for? And, and number one, how do you fit that? How do you fit partnerships into your brand? How big of a revenue source is that, you know, and when did you kind of start exploring those options? Um, I don't think I ever look at it in terms so much as, as revenue. I mean, it helps. Mm -hmm. And the more of a reputation you get with that brand, the better they'll treat you. So in terms of G Fuel, for example, I've been with G Fuel now for about a year and a half, uh, maybe a bit longer, actually. Mm, yeah, about a year and a half, actually. Uh, signed my second contract about half a year ago, and they gave me you know very favorable terms because I proved to them that I could sell, that I was very loyal, that you know the way that I am as a person and how I built myself. You know, they, they came to me, well, we want to re-sign you. Here's our offers. And, you know, I took their maximum length contract and said, well, I'll, I'll sign this, but you give it on my terms. So I've built that report where I can say, well, now I've done six months of doing really well. And now it's time for you guys to listen to how I want it to be. And, and, and that's how you do it. You have to be business minded again. Um, in terms of Games Advantage with the glasses, I've recently signed with them. They have a great ethos. Um, very, I like the way that the company operates. I love the product. And to aspiring content creators, several things I'd want to mention. One, do not just partner with anybody just for like a clout move or anything like that. If you're not passionate about the product, mm -hmm. don't bother doing it because it's not going to be worth it. You're not going to be interested in selling it. Sure, it's great. You'll get the initial announcement, but then what do you do? Then you're stuck in the partnership, which um, is, is not going to benefit you in any way if your audience has no interest in it or that you aren't actually interested in the product itself. Uh, two, please define what a partnership actually is. So if they're saying that they're giving you a partnership, is it actually a partnership or is it an affiliation? So if they're saying, hey, we'll, we'll give you a code for 10% off to use on all of our products, it's like, we won't give you anything until you buy stuff. That's not partnership right there. That's an affiliation. They just give you a code and expect you to buy stuff before they even give you anything. So it's just like, right. make sure you read before you sign the dotted line because a lot of companies are out there that are weird with exploiting you know, content creators and people at certain levels to try and get what they want out of it, but then kind of screw you over at the same time. So um, I would say... When it comes to partnerships, uh, they will come around when you least expect it. So, as mm. you know, you can chase them if you like and be proactive with them because I, I do in certain aspects. But funnily enough, um, G Fuel and Gamer Advantage both kind of came at a, a, let's say, a mutual level where I was interested in them, but they were interested in me. It wasn't me chasing, chasing, chasing. Right. Um, yeah. And it feels better like that as a content creator because you, you've come to a certain point and you've grown yourself to a point and you know that company is investing in you as well as you're investing in them. You're not begging to be part of something. And I think that right there, straight away, you know, you're shaking hands at the at the deal go and you both get yourself onto the same wavelength. You're not feeling exploited by that particular company, you know, so. Right. Yeah. I mean, it could, it's, it's a whole different level because, I mean, I went through it in the beginning, you know, it's like, you, <laughs> you like I felt that, you know, like if I tie myself to these brands, it's going to make me a better content creator. It's the same, it's the same bullshit that like. I need, yep. I need this badass computer, you know, to be yep. a good content creator. I, I fell into that trap, man. Now I, I love looking at my computer and waking up and it makes me smile. So, you know, yeah. that, that part's great, but it, it didn't, it just put me really far into debt and it put me really far behind on, you know, what I could do. And, you know, what I like, instead of investing in myself, I invested yeah. in other people because I had no confidence in myself. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So, but I, I, I like that. And and the reason why I wanted to go into that is because, you know, you mentioned you had some sales experience. You mentioned you had some work experience. You, you did go to, yeah. you did go to university. Um, you know, and so I, I feel that it's, it's, a, it's something that I'm starting to recognize. Like if you just take choice a, like to me, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Like if you just choose to do content and nothing else around it, you know, it just goes to show that there is so much more. And just because I really want to say is because I was 20, 
I was 26 before I got started in any of this. Like, don't Type. think that because going into a university or having a job or like choosing to do something, it's not going to benefit you in this in the long run. There's so many, now that this is becoming real, it takes real yeah. life skills to make this thing real. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 100%. I mean, so yeah. hundred. And I, I really like that. And so one thing that stuck out to me from you that, that, that I didn't, that I don't know if a lot of other creators do is your, your usage of LinkedIn, uh, the social profile or the social yeah. platform. When it comes to when it comes to social media platforms, you know how often you know when it comes to LinkedIn specifically, how do you use LinkedIn? Um, I used to use it a lot more. I think it's kind of, okay. I mean, LinkedIn for me was previously just to kind of keep an up to date CV and, mm-hmm. um, yeah, just have like a record of everything that I've done and how long I've been doing it for. I mean, I'll be honest, over the last kind of maybe two years, I don't think I've. I haven't really used it. Maybe just to keep up with connections from work. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a good tool, especially if you're seeking new opportunities because you'll be able to get through to people that I guarantee you will have no clue who they are on social media. And the best part about LinkedIn is it, you know, defines their job title. That's what it's about. And you can see right there, if you're looking for the marketing manager in the UK for a particular brand, I guarantee it will say marketing manager for blah, blah, in the UK. Straight away, you're through to the person that you need to get to. So, you know, it cuts out the middleman process, that depends if they obviously want to speak to you, if they're willing to accept your message, et cetera. But right. it's kind of like a fast track to get in there. Um, I just I just think LinkedIn is a good place to keep your up-to-date CV, keep in contact with 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 any good contacts in the industry and stuff. And just, you know, if you're looking for more business opportunities, it's definitely a great place to do that as well. Gotcha. Gotcha, man. Uh, yeah, because I, I remember when you had said that, like I because I, I follow yeah. you on LinkedIn. Um, and I, you know, and, and and there was a there was an opportunity that you had from LinkedIn. I'm like, that was pretty that was pretty dope, man. That was the first time I actually saw someone on Twitch like yeah. actually like going into LinkedIn, you know, because it's not typically a platform that uh you know that most people go on, you know. Yeah. Want to switch directions to another platform, TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um oh, you recently man. celebrated fifty thousand. Hell 50, yeah. 000, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels so, good, dude. What? <sighs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's just, it's kind of, that platform is nuts. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what do you even say about TikTok? It's just, it's so dynamic. It's so diverse. And it has changed everything for so many creators this year. I mean, I feel so much more confident with the new route that I'm taking, knowing, as weird as this sounds, that TikTok is there. Because I know the direction that I'm mm. going in and the equipment that I'll have and the, and the team that I have behind me, we can put some badass stuff out on TikTok. And you know, if you get the favor of TikTok, that will translate to almost anywhere if you do it properly. So TikTok has just been this kind of revolutionary platform to allow content creators to just really get themselves and their personalities out there in short, quick ways of doing it. And yeah, it's just, it's just changed everything over the last year or so for me. So. So what, how, did, how does your, con- like, so what, you know, when it, when you produce content on TikTok, do you derive that yeah. from anywhere? Is that all from your live streams or like what, it, what, it, what do you, do you keep it like one, I guess one style or do you mix it up? What does that look like? I mean, I'll be honest with you right now. I'm all over the place at the moment. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I mean this in a way that I'm, and I've told it to my community right now. I'm just, I, I'm just waiting for a time period to turn over right now. I'm waiting until I have this meeting with my broker until I can find out more about what's going on in my house so that I can get to a point right now. I'm just, you know, covering time to get there so Mm. at the moment i'm just getting clips from twitch you know um you know my best friend actually does my editing for me and he's got a lot better over time so he's my like official editor now um and you know i get him twitch clips and some other funny moments and other things that happens most of it derives from my live streams because you know it's good to recycle content and do things with it um but then i also like to make some some live videos as well but I, i noticed that on a platform like that the higher your production quality and the better camera quality and all that stuff the better the videos will do and that's something that i'm really planning on thriving when i get to where i want to be later on this year so like like i said right now it's very much a dead period where it's just kind of just waiting for time to turn over obviously lockdown has not done anyone any favors that's extended right. everything i would have been moved out by now if it wasn't for lockdown changing everything in the country so yeah, I mean, you know, I, I put my update out today. I've, I've let my community know about it. And with TikTok, we're just kind of just, you know, just going through day by day and just building up what we're going. But we're still growing, which is great. And we're still pushing the content out there. But right now, it's just, like I said, it's a waiting period for what's to come in the future. So. Absolutely, man. Uh, I got, I'm got. i going to ask a, strange, a, a different t- different type of question because it's been my experience, sure. but I want to hear it from you. Is it, 
when it comes to the pandemic and when it comes to lockdown as, mm. as terrible as it's been, you know, like it, it has, has COVID affected you positively and has it like, it has it in any ways affected you positively and has it affected your content? How has it affected your content? It's a hard one, isn't it? Because you can always say that you've mm-hmm. got more viewers yeah. or thingy just because COVID was there and people weren't able to go in. And, you know, I've had loads of comments saying that you, I even get people's come back to me now saying, Stanley, I remember when you, when you, when lockdown first happened and you were blowing up on MW, everybody was come, you know, we were coming in and your streams really helped me out back then. And I had somebody say literally the other day, uh, he was like, dude, thank you so much for what you did for me last year. And it's just like you said, leaves that mental note in the head. Right. So, um, having a, 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 a platform like mine and creating the content the way that we do it is especially now with how things are in the world, I think more important than ever, um, people need that mental yeah. uh, release and need that positive space for everything that's going on in the world. Cause I think sometimes it can just feel like everything's just going the wrong way. So um, I, I would say, yes, it definitely, of, of, of course it has helped. I mean, you know, people being inside, we're going to watch streams and not school. They're not at work yeah. for sure. Um, but in other ways, in other ways, not. I mean, my own mental health has definitely deteriorated. And if I didn't have the my family, my girlfriend, you know, my community, and all these amazing people around me, uh, God knows what would have happened to me over this last year. Um, and especially my 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 career and work. If I didn't have all this stuff going on to keep myself busy, I probably would have gone insane. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, man, it's been it's been a it's been a life changing experience, and it really makes you realize that we can't take anything for granted anymore. I miss my social life so much. I'm a big party animal. I love going out with friends. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I see you laughing because yeah, you can tell by the atmosphere of the stream that we're, we're yeah. being on parties and big music yeah. and loud music and raves festivals. And that's, Oh, that's, that's what I'm all about. I just ooze that energy. And I love that kind of stuff. So I'm all about that good feeling and the atmosphere. And we've just, we've just not had that in the last year in the country. So I'm very excited for lockdown to end and, even though necessarily it might impact my Twitch stats a bit, I'm going to get my life back and I'm excited yeah. for that. So, Yeah, yeah. E- exactly. And, and this, I think there's a, I think there's a general, you know, a lot of people have been impacted negatively, but I, I don't yeah. feel that there's enough talk about some of the positive impacts that this has had. And it's, and this yeah. is not to say that, you know, my heart, like there, there has been some, and, and with me, I've gone through some extremely tough learning processes, but at the same time though, I've gotten to learn who I am. I've gotten to like, yeah. discover. I've discovered a level of motivation I've never been able to discover for. And I think it's, I'm trying to normalize like talking about the successes that we have had and some of the positive things that are coming out of it, you know, because I yeah. don't think that that is getting enough light or enough attention at all. You know? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's easy to say how bad things suck and, 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 and they, and they do suck, but it's like my opinion, my thing is like, okay, I know they suck. Right. We, we, yeah. we, we know that, <laughs> um, you know, so what's good about this? So, Second follow-up question, you know, when it comes to, I think you answered a little bit, but want to go a little bit more in depth. When things start opening back up, has the thought crossed your mind of how that is going to impact it? Are you worried about it? You know, what are your thoughts on that? Definitely not worried. Right now, I'm more excited than ever to take, to go down my new path and direction. I definitely, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, touching on what we said earlier, need that for not, not only uh, people that watch my content, but for my own personal gain as well. Like, I, ever since getting into content, I love creating content. It's so much fun. And the thing that really sparked it for me when I first started thinking like this was phase five and phase five had me doing all these crazy challenges, sense. right? Oh, it was yeah. so much fun, right? Going out and recording videos in the yeah. wild and doing all this stuff. And I was just like, yeah. I didn't, it, even though it was really nerve wracking, I didn't want it to end because I, I felt part of something and I felt like I was going out of my comfort bubble and doing things that I'd never done before. And it made me also realize how much I enjoyed doing IRL content and being out and about and not just having to be at a computer and playing games. Like it made me realize that even though how much I love gaming and I want to consider that and incorporate it, I don't want to be tied down to anything. Uh, it was definitely around the phase five time where I started thinking like that. And that, yeah, that is definitely where, um, or what has pushed me to where, to where I am now and getting to where I am now. So I mean, yeah, in some ways it's going to be weird not being a COD creator anymore, but I, I can tell that I feel like this because every time that they drop down an update or anything and people are talking about, oh, I can't wait to make a video on this. I haven't got that drive to make that video on a new gun anymore or do this. My interests have changed and it's just, yeah. I've, I've developed as a person and this is just how I want my things to go. I love Call of Duty. There are aspects of it that I love about it and that's playing with the community, running tournaments, COD casting, um, you know, putting on like, let's say like five, top five, top 10 best plays for the community, helping other people get their names out there, all that kind of stuff. But in terms of like 
the ins and outs and patches and updates and stuff that that part of me i think is gone now and you know and that's okay because we're all adapters creators and yeah. it's it's it, i'm really excited this this year right now my life in six months is going to be completely different to what it is right now and that and that for me really excites me so that's um, incredible and i want to there was I something you, you 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 mentioned it briefly but i, I really yeah. want to i i think that there's a, a dialogue especially on twitter in the twitch community and the stream community is that yeah. this has to always be done for other people and what i heard you say yeah. was that you know you know for personal gain and I really yep. want to, I, I want to normalize that shit as well, because like, it's like, you yep. like, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't get something out of it. Like there is like, we have yep. to be happy in order to provide. Oh God. Like, yeah. hundred you percent. Know? Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. I mean, I, th I think it's getting a balance of both. And mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, one thing, one thing you'll see from my content that, that comes forward is the community is definitely derived in the center of it all. However, as that continues to grow, I will also grow as the influencer and the creator behind it. So even though I incorporate the talents and, you know, the interests of, of other people and stuff and whatnot, the, the, the whole background process is still going to be to grow myself as a creator and get my name out there as well. So, um, yeah, a hundred percent. There has to be personal gain. Cause if there isn't, you're not going to gain anything from it. And you know, as much as we all love to help other people out, there has to be something in there for you as well. So it's all about how do you get the most out of it? And then how do you use that content and also help other people? Cause it's, in this industry, we're a lot stronger together. If we, you know, if we're if we're trying to grow, and you know, during our content, we're able to to feature and, and support other creators, and it. it's all you know, it all ties in together, hand in hand. One creator grows, the other creator grows. And if 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 you if you eliminate that thought process of everybody is competition to everybody's actually on their own journey and trying to create something, you can actually get in some really cool partnerships with people and make some really interesting content because people get really fascinated by seeing how two different individual creators work together. And you should never, you should never ignore that. And that's something I'm definitely going to be exploring a lot more this year as well. That's sick, man. I mean, yeah. And, and you, you touched on a great point. Like when there's, there's, it's a really, it's a really big internet, man. It's a really hmm. big place. And there is, there is, there is actually endless amounts of opportunity. And I, I don't, yeah. it's, it's hard to see that in the beginning, but like, yeah. I, re I really wish more people would adopt that. And I'm really glad that you said yeah. that. Cause it's, you know, we grow together, like we're stronger together. We, you know, we don't grow individually. We don't, there, the yeah. long are the days where we had to step over people to get some sort of success. I mean, I can see that in the past, like, you know, in older generations, that's kind of what the norm was. If you really wanted yeah. to be happy, you kind of had to do some shit that you didn't want to do. Um, you yeah. know, and, and I, and I'm so glad that we're not in that. We have the number one, the internet's incredibly transparent, you know, and it's really obvious and everyone, yep. you know, <laughs> everyone knows yep. each other. Cancel um, culture and all, yeah. you know, if you, if, if, if you're going to stop people in the back, then don't expect to not be outed for it. So you, right. you know, be, be accountable for your own actions. If you're going to be nasty about it, you'll be treated nasty about it. And that's how I think it should be as well. So. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I think though, you know, if, if, unless there's a, in the, unless there is a radical shift in a demonstration through action that you have done something different, I believe you, you know, like, and that's, that's in real life. That's in, it doesn't, I mean, internet is real life. I, I really wish, yeah. you know, like, like this is real life because this is what we're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. And, and, and I, I think that it's important when we, when we do these is that it's, it's, it's an interesting blend of creativity, but also having that business aspect, you know, to where it's like, we both understand that this is, there is a mutual gain to be had from this. And there, and I yeah. think that's where a lot of, and including myself, you know, struggle. So like, if I put myself out there, you know, then all of a sudden, like they're going to either take advantage of me or it's not going to work out or it's only going to yeah. be for their gain. And I think that that really needs to be understood, which is why, you know, not that you have to go to university, but like, like taking some, like we have YouTube, everything is free now, you know, every, everything's free, whether you go to university, whether you look it up on YouTube, whether you just listen to a bunch of people that you look up to. I mean, you know, this is something worth investing in because again, going back to your original point, it's not just playing video games. It's not just yeah. doing this, you know, like Tim, the tap man, you know, and, and, and Nick Merckx, like they do a lot of other stuff, but they're kind of in a breed that like Twitch was different back then, you know, and, and now different. you see Tim. It, it was very different. And so the way people grew back then is not the way people grow now. You know, yeah. um, it's an incredibly different playing field. Um, want to, want to, want to, uh, dive as well, like into the future a little bit, you know, when it comes to creating content, creating, being an influencer, is there ever any dreams of like, you know, like running your own company or like having, you know, like having a certain type of like, is there, is there like, are you like, basically what I'm asking is, are you reverse, is this part of your reverse engineering of a bigger goal that you have? Oh, heck yeah. I'm, I'm ambitious as hell, man. Yeah. Like, 
I, this is and this is what it when when I was telling you about my uh, uh, you know my initial day and what it consists of that last part where I was saying I'd be in bed and put YouTube on in the background. I get a lot of inspiration from a lot of big YouTubers that I watch, and mm-hmm. you know just get my get my tablet out and I'm like right, like even even you know as we speak right now over the last couple of nights I'm compromising a business plan similar to the tweet that I posted out earlier is what I'm going to be doing this year. You know I have at the start of what is a creative team that I'm going to be working with and how we're going to do it. And it's just going to be something that people just haven't seen before. And then that that is going to allow me to grow in industries that I've always wanted to get into, as well as stay in gaming and content creation, but then even expand even further from that. My original uh, goal in life was to be the owner of a franchise of nightclubs. Again, this goes down to my mm-hmm. big yeah. aspirations of being a party goer and music and yeah. just giving that experience from when somebody gets excited about going on a night out to how they go on that night out. That whole experience right there needs to be tailored to, to a particular person. I'm very detailed with that. And one day, um, don't know how long it's going to be from now, um, I plan to have my own chain of clubs where you go in there and it is just dynamic as hell. You know, the most <laughs> bumping house music. Uh, just, uh, yeah, there's, there's so much to it, but that's like way, way down the line. But yeah, God, yeah, there's so many aspirations. Um, end of the day, we only live once. Mm-hmm. I... I've proved to myself time and time again, three years of starting with absolutely nothing, no experience in this, not knowing anybody. I've got to where I am right now just with hard work. So anybody tells me that you can't do it, I'll just be like, I'll just tell you what I've done the last three years. And they'll just be like, don't ever tell me what I can and can't do. I do whatever the hell I put my head to, you know? I would say if one human being can do it, so can somebody else. Mm-hmm. And these days, people listen to influencers probably more than anybody else in the world right now. And if I continue to grow in the next five to 10 years to where I want to be, and let's say, for example, I'm to start my own chain of nightclubs and stuff, and I blow up and get to like a big level. Who isn't going to want to come to a club like that, knowing that it's ran by that particular influencer? You know, getting selfies and pictures, and they'll be like, "Yeah, I'm in Club Thingy right now on an invitation or something." You know, it's the the world is is changing. Everything's more and more dynamic every day, and it's really exciting. So, yeah, I I, I love that you touched on it because, like, you know, one of one of the people that influences me the most is Nate Shot. You know, of uh, mm. of, of, of Hundred Thieves, and like. To the point, and I'll be I'll be really transparent here on the podcast. To a point yeah. where, you know, when he tweeted out, "Man, this new Justin Bieber album slaps," I don't listen to Justin Bieber. I actually but you did. <laughs> I actually fucking listened to it, man. Yeah. And while I may not bump it in my car, the the simple fact that he tweeted that out, and I imme- there was no hesitation. There was yeah. absolutely zero hesitation from from the tweet to the listen. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna listen to that. You know. Yeah. Um, I think there's there's something special in that that or it's. Honestly, to me, it's it's a scary thing of like as I as I grow, like, what if I say some wrong shit? You know, like what yeah. if I say like because we we have a lot of responsibility, and I think it's really important to touch on that point. You know, for sure. Yeah, I mean, so I love that I love that you have something outside that you just wanted to like wanted to go to because I think that yeah. for me that north star um, is honestly the most important piece that allows me to stay present today. Like it's it's literally yeah. one of the only things. Um, and for me, it was, you know, when I told my grandfather that I wanted to run my own esports team, you know, and he, and it, this was literally the moment where I started streaming on Twitch was like, you know, he just yeah. looked at me and he cried. And I'm just like, yeah. that was literally all I needed to know. You know, that was, that was the only thing. And it gives me goosebumps when I say that today, you know? Yeah. But, well, man, you know, I want to, want to start, want to start wrapping things up here, man. You know, uh, if you could give, man, you know, I, I, I got a really good response from this question last time I asked it. So if you were to die tomorrow, you know, what would you want to accomplish before you died? I think it's a very different answer now to what it would have been a year ago. Firstly, with lockdown. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's a tough question. Um <laughs> tomorrow is not a long time so it's not i don't know I, I i i divide my day up so that i can do everything i wanted probably do like one last stream uh make sure mm-hmm. to meet up with my girlfriend make sure to see all my best friends get them all together see my family um yeah i don't know really that's that's, that's, that's a real tough one I think it would definitely be dividing up my day with let's say probably the four things that i love the most aka streaming family um you know girlfriend and whatnot and yeah, I think that's, mm-hmm. that's I think that's probably what I would do, um, and then probably in the last bit before it happens, just do some crazy shit that I'd say I would never do or whatever because you know <laughs> at the end of the day I'm going to die anyway. So uh, yeah, that's pro- that's probably the route that I would go down. So um, yeah, just glow up, go out in a 
explosive ball of chaos, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Well, <laughs> I, I, I want to, I want to fine tune it and ask one more to that is that yeah. if you, if you were, you know, to this point right now, have you accomplished everything that you want to, you know, if, if you were like, it would, would people were like, say, say you were to, you know, to, to pass tomorrow, like, would you feel satisfied with that? Like, would there be any regrets? Nah, definitely not. Not, not because there's any regrets, but because I want to get, I want to achieve so more, so much more right. with my life. I want to, I've got this like little thing at the moment where I've, I've said, I want to work so hard in the next 10 years that the 10 years after that, I can reap all the rewards that I've got from the first 10 years of working. So, you know, I want to, you know, I turn 30 in September. I want to go through my thirties and work so hard and do so much stuff with content and all these other things that I plan to do that when I get to 40 years on, I'm sitting there, I'm like, yo, look at, look at, look at the last 10 years. Look at what we've I'm already like that with the first three years. I already feel like that in some way, but you know, it's kind of, we're just getting started still. Three years is nothing in, in any industry. So um, yeah. yeah, let's see what the next 10 years brings and yeah, if, if if it was if if the day was to come tomorrow, then you know I'd be I'd be I'd be proud, but I'd be good because I want to achieve so much more. So yeah. yeah, I love that man. I love that. So yeah. lastly, wrapping it, man. Where where can people find you? Where are you the most active? Where do you want people to go? Uh, that are people are listening to the podcast. But yeah, I mean, feel free to follow on any socials. Um, Twitter and Instagram are both Carnage Stallion, K-R-N-G Stallion, all one word. Uh, Twitch stream every day apart from Tuesday Saturdays. Uh, 2 p.m. till 9 p.m. UK GMT at twitch.tv forward slash stallion. Uh, TikTok's also stallion. Discord, uh, Team SSC, which is stallion streaming community. And yeah, if anybody ever wants to come across for a vibe, definitely come over to a Twitch stream sometime and do our best to try and make people feel at home. So I'll give you a voucher on that. It's a vibe. <laughs> thank you, bro. Well, I appreciate man, it. Man, Stally, it was a, it was a pleasure having you on here. <laughs> Thanks, thank thank you it for was... having me on here, man. For real, honestly, it's a, it's always a pleasure to be on a podcast, dude. So thank you. Absolutely, man. Well, let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and call it, and I'll catch you later, my friend. That is, bro.